Welcome back to New Rockstars, and with Secret Wars having been announced, we know that some crazy crossover fighting between heroes of different universes are bound to happen, much like it did in the comics. Cause it ain't called Secret Wars for nothing, baby. But what if I told you that Secret Wars won't take place within the MCU 616 at all? What if I told you that Secret Wars was going to pit the Fox X-Men against the Sony Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. This is Rogue Theory, the show where we pitch the wildest theories for the nerdy titles that we love, a show made possible by the support of NordVPN. More on those beautiful people in a minute. My name is MT, and Greg Rogue with me today is the wonderful Whitney Van Lenningham. What's going on, Whitney? Hi, so uh, uh, it's me, and uh, <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast, it's my birthday. The day that Happy you listen birthday. to this. <laughs> so I'm recording it at age 31. The podcast doesn't come out until I turn 32. So yeah, it's a, <laughs> you're listening to a 31 year old right now, but I'm a 32 year old while you're listening to it. Isn't that wild? You're listening to 31 year old yes. Whitney talk, but I'm 32. Wow. Ah! It's so weird. Time it's travel. Oh my time goodness, happy travel, birthday bitches. Whitney. We love you so much. Thank you for surviving for 32 years. My I know. I can't believe I did it either. <laughs> Wild. How am I not dead yet? <laughs> but we also have a uh, non-birthday boy here, friend of the show, Tom Michelson. How is it on your unbirthday today, Tom? Oh, great. I'm a strapping young 56, and I'm you know hanging in there, trying to make sure I, hey. I stay till till 57. <laughs> so thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Not not thirty one, no. but yeah, but you know we, we made it. I, I, I woke up at four a.m., went to McDonald's, got my coffee, and I've been waiting, holding out for my nap to do the show. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're fifty six, I'm a monkey's uncle. <laughs> It's, I, I do feel like I'm like 60, even though I'm like 30. Like my, my bone, once you hit 30, I feel like you, you just, your, your muscles start to go. Like you're just, I don't oh, know. You got pain, just, you didn't your know you bones pain don't before. work yeah. anymore. Your bones turn mm. to that, you know, like the squishy things when you like go to like a gymnastic studio and you like jump into that pit. That's what your, your foam. bones become. The yeah, foam? like the foam blocks, oh, yes. but it hurts. Mm. So they become <laughs> like, like, eh, like that, but not, but painful. Uh, so anyone yeah, who's under basically. 30 listening to this, get ready. Bone pit, not foam pit, bone pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a bone <laughs> pit, definitely. The bone pit. Definitely the bone pit. That sounds pit. hardcore. Uh, that's the name of my vagina, am I right, ladies? <laughs> oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding, her name is I Shirley. I love that, that's hilarious. Shirley. Her name is Shirley. <laughs> but also, my man, big head gang brother, Tommy Bechtel. What's going on, Tommy? MT, I'm 23 now, but will I live to see 24 the way things <laughs> is going? I don't know. Uh, I'll use my time uh, to say, Whitney, like a bottle of wine, you are aging so fine. Uh, we celebrate you, my roommate. Perfectly. I can't wait till you come into the office later today to give you a birthday hug. Oh, I'm gonna snug you so hard. I'm gonna snug you so hard. Just a big old snug. No. Why are you rubbing this yeah. in my face? You know I can't give Whitney hugs. What are you doing? I'm, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> we hugged so much though. We that hugged. We made up for we lost did. time hugging when you were in town. That was great. Come back. I miss you already. I know. Come back. Yes, I, I, I miss you guys so much. But not during the cyclone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just the atmospheric <laughs> river. Yeah. 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 But now it is time for our first topic, because I believe that the Fox X-Men will face off against the Sony Spider-Man and villains in um, the Secret Wars movie. Because th this this theory is based on a rumor that I saw on the internet um, a couple of days ago. It's a baseless rumor. We usually don't do rumors here on New Roxas, but I thought um, it'd be a fun- It's rogue theory. We can do whatever theory. we want. Yes, You're allowed. It's, let's get super rogue. <laughs> Your theories are valid here. Exactly. All theories are valid. They're all true here. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, this is our cinematic universe. But no, uh, I think that it's a really fun idea to have the, the Fox X-Men and the Sony Spider-Men face off in Secret Wars while, um, you know, the Kang Dynasty will end up being like the main Avengers multiverse film um, that they end up doing. Um, because we know that in the Secret Wars event in the comics, um, a huge part of, of what happened before Secret Wars was the incursions uh, where different Earths were crossing over with each other. And basically one Earth has to, the heroes of one Earth has to fight the heroes of the other Earth to to survive, basically. Like one Earth has to be destroyed. It'd be really cool to see the Fox X-Men universe 
crossover with the Sony Spider-Man universe and like have them duke it out. And then the winner of that universe fight ends up fighting um, the MCU. I think that'd be really fun. Uh, what do you, what do you guys Bro, think? Bro, Wolverine is going to f*** up Morbius. He's going to f*** that guy up. <laughs> yeah. Morbius is not surviving against the X-Men. No. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jared Leto? Yeah. No, Jared Leto is not surviving. I thought you were going to say 30 other people before Morbius. And that's how much Morbius isn't even on my yeah. radar. <laughs> You're right. Listen, when I think Sony, I think that it's Morbin time, Tom. Right? And I think that you need oh, to get on board oh with that. God. It's my birthday and it's Morbin You're time. You're right. It's Morbin time. And you know, he, he's, he's going to do some good and maybe some good. That means getting sliced mm. up by Wolverine. Who knows? Honestly, Who knows? that would be My a great God. way to never do a Morbius if again. Jared Leto came if Jared back to Leto get just murked, gets iced that would by be amazing. <laughs> it would be, <laughs> I would literally pay twice. Yes, that would redeem so much. Well, they brought back some people just to, you know, for these roles just to die off. Well, Jared, Jared Leto is the exact weirdo that would be on board with that. Like, he's like, yes, I will be on the, in this movie for five minutes. And then have my like throat slashed by a Wolverine claw and then die. And then that will be it. And then I can. Yeah, but you know, you know that he's going to get meta into that role yeah. for yeah. like eight months yeah. beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Eight months. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to show up with bandages <laughs> on his throat. He's going to move to like a commune in Joshua Tree and just yeah. practice being the guy yeah. who dies five minutes in for like he's eight like, months. Find a good spot outside and just lay there for four yeah. months. Just. Just practicing the death scene of getting sliced right. by Wolverine. He just pays like a like a hobo. He's like, hey, just stab me in the neck. I just want to see how it feels. I'll yeah. say this, though. I'll say this to MT's point. Imagine Tom, Toby, Andrew with a Topher, Tom Hardy chaser as the two Venoms behind them uh, oh, charging shit. towards Rogue, Beast, uh, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Jean Grey. That's kind of an, that's an exciting uh, potential, you know, even if they did the iconic uh, X-Men 97 animation uh, running towards each other, yeah. you know, nee, 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 yeah. nee, right. but it was, it was yeah, those yeah. crew. I mean, come on. But we also have, you know, we also have Vulture. Yeah. We also have like that, that oh, whole yeah. like uh, team yeah. of bad guys going good mm -hmm. that they're setting up over there. Uh, the disco, that, what was the, the new movie that was just like announced? The disco bandit oh, or whatever. Oh, um, the, the uh, uh, Donald uh, Glover's uh, movie. Uh, oh, that's uh, right. Uh, Hypno uh, Hustler? The Hypno oh, Hustler, yeah. Oh, the okay. Hypno Hustler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, though. Wait, wait, disco wait, bandit. Now, I was like, that now might now be it. Now we need a disco movie called The Disco Bandit. Starring Tommy Bechtold. We would all watch. Oh, my God. Yeah, Tommy Bechtold, The Disco Bandit. The Disco Bandit. That's good. alive. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just get him like a big fro. <laughs> right? He's one of people like, I would love that so much. I was literally <laughs> just going to say we need to get <laughs> have Tommy. Well, you can tell by the way I'm doing my walk. <laughs> you know? He's going to oh be like uh, the bad guy in Despicable Me 3, like dance, yes, disco, dance fighting, like yes, all the time. Yes. 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 I would pay $100 per ticket. <laughs> but no, like, we, we know that, like, Sony's having their own little, like, villain universe that they're building up with the, with the Venom verse. Like, so I think that'd be really dope to see that universe face off against the Fox X-Men. Oh, we'll also have, uh, what's his name? Bad Bunny's character, right? El, is it El oh, Muerto? Yeah. Oh, yeah. El, 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 El Muerto. Oh, I yeah, forgot yeah. about uh -huh. that one, too. And Craven, Craven will be out by then. Right. Exactly. Right? So that's happening. Yeah. In, and, you know, speaking of Fox, I mean, it's more than just the X-Men, really. Like, you, because I, I was thinking this could be a chance for Chris Evans to come back, but not as Cap, but as mm. uh, Human Torch. Mm -hmm. What if we had the Galactus Cloud for from Fantastic Four Two versus the Eliath Cloud. <laughs> yes. From oh, Logan. Shit. Oh my God. Cloudy Cloud. Cloudy Cloud. Oh my God. We gotta get a room for the building. Be like, oh my God, guys, this fight is crazy. <laughs> Bro, let's start a betting pool for the fucking Cloud. Let's see what's fight. going on. Let's see what's going on in your neck of the woods. <laughs> Next snap. Boom. It's going to rain like yeah. a family guy. Can we do like a draft of like fantasy cloud fighting <laughs> where we draft all of our favorite clouds? Dude, favorite fighting clouds. Oh my the movie. God. Uh, <laughs> I will pay $101 for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here and start our own oh studio. My God. Yeah, what are we yeah, doing seriously. here? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like it's it, it would just be so create like the possibility like the fantastic four from uh which is technically in that fox x-men universe i believe yeah you know chris evans like they could all come back and like fight against 
um, the X Men. Well, not the X Men. Um, mm. the Spider Men. You could have the mm. cool uh, Lawrence Fishburne Silver Surfer come mm-hmm. back to that. That would actually be dope seeing him because oh. that was one of the coolest parts of that entire franchise. Is how nuts and weird yes. he was. Remember how he was like mm. morphing through his board mm. and like absorbing rockets and mm. just so weird. And, and he could he could make like a movie projector on his abs and like mm. tell his like whole life story like, like a that, Teletubby. That was really cool. My like God. a Teletubby, exactly. So I like, <laughs> imagine him coming back. That'd be dope. You know who I think we should let in on this little game Wes Anderson because then we could have the Fantastic Four fight the Fantastic Mr. Fox and that shit would be sick oh this God. claymation against like superheroes it would just be good Fantastic Sam's like, <laughs> razor yeah. blade scissors and Fantastic Sam's yes yeah. <laughs> first first rogue theory of the year I'm, I'm going rogue on the point award and giving Whitney a rogue or something that one <laughs> that one yes <laughs> Thanks for that mm-hmm. one. For so it'll sure. be FX, Sony, and Wes Anderson present. Yep. Mm. The Fantastiverse. Yes. I love it. $102 for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, well, let's say like the Fox X-Men did face off against the Sony-verse. Which universe do you guys think would actually win in that scenario? Mm. Oh, that's tough because the X Men are like, of course, super powerful. But I think they, I think the the Marvel verse would have to win because I, 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 unfortunately, the behind the scenes part will have to come to place. Like Halle Berry probably doesn't want to keep playing Storm, but if she knows she'd be part of the MCU and go out with a bang and have a cool scene, maybe she'd come back for that. You know, I think that would be the way to to bring all these A listers back to the for just one last ride because you know only Hugh Jackman got a kind of a send off with Logan, and even he's getting to come back. So maybe other people might want to come back and have their final moment with their character and have something cool or badass go down. And I think, you know, it would be a good opportunity for, cause if they have like a, almost like a three, three, three factions at once, right? With Marvel, Sony and MCU fighting at once, then you could have the X-Men get some wins on the Sony guys, you know what I mean? And kill some of them off. And so they're not just getting murked left and right. Uh, but I think that would be the way to do it is like, cause MCU is gonna, is, is what's gonna survive. It's survived already. Fox universe is dead, but you could bring those people back for one cool ass ride. I think that'd be badass. Yeah, I'm with it. I think uh, the hard thing is defeating three Spider-Men, right? Like, I mean, the other Sony characters, you're kind of like, eh. Eventually, you know, we know how to we know how to get the symbiote suit to to detach from Eddie, and then that makes it more vulnerable. The killing three Spider Men seems almost impossible to me. But yeah, especially when it's yeah. Toby, Andrew, yeah. and Tom, it's true. because yes. they're very powerful <laughs> together. Yeah. So I, I give the slight advantage to the Spider Men. I would love for them to find a way to bring back the different generations of X Men too. Imagine double Magnetos, a Fast Bender, and a Ian mm-hmm. McKellen. They, that that team alone bananas. could probably give everybody a run for their money. Um, I want to see that guy from X-Men 3 who can grow limbs come back. Yeah. Who's like just throwing his limbs. He's like yeah. the detachable kid, but like not yeah. as a joke right. in the Fox universe, <laughs> even though he's just as ridiculous. Yeah, and he's getting his limbs chopped off by everybody. He's like, come on, come on. I'd like to see that guy. He's like the Black He's like the black Knight in uh, Holy Grail. Exactly. Ground. Imagine a scenario where the, the younger X-Men fight the older X-Men, like the, the two different X-Men mm. fight. Because um, they're different timelines, essentially. Babies versus grown-ups. Dude, double beasts. Yeah, Kelsey Grammer. And, yeah. Mm, they should yeah. do like a Rugrats in Paris kind of thing. Yeah. Where they make all the <laughs> X-Men babies and then they let them loose exactly. in a city. <laughs> yes. Baby X-Men. I would watch that. Baby we X-Men. Just that what if episode. And then the baby X-Men can fight the Muppet babies uh, because that uh, would be oh cool and a way to get the Jim Henson verse into the, the MCU. Baby- and then, exactly. And then the boss babies can fight the baby geniuses. Oh shit! The boss babies have to fight the baby geniuses. And they could geniuses. be fighting to the tune of Baby Shark just yeah. to the death. Baby yeah. Shark. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's just going nuts. Avengers <laughs> Baby Wars. Baby <laughs> secret baby wars. And then the title comes up and it's like. Secret doo-doo, baby. Doo-doo, 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 and the title of Avengers <laughs> comes up over that too. Yeah. Or a Keshul version of that. And it's secret because none of their parents know that they can talk just like in Rugrats. Yes. So that's why it's a secret <laughs> baby war. Oh. Very cool, you guys. I think we just came up with like a bunch of really good movies. We just came up with like eight franchises in like eight <laughs> minutes. This is great. Eight billion dollar franchises. But all right, now it's time to vote on this crazy theory of the Sony Spider-Man universe facing off against the Fox X-Men universe. Do you guys think that this theory is rogus, bogus, or ogus? 
take it away, Wendy. Rogus, duh, obviously. I just got so on board with this on every level. Let's do it, let's go. Let's have fucking Morbius fighting Wolverine. That's what I wanna see, baby. I wanna see it. Oh my God, I wanna see what would happen if if he drank Wolverine's blood. Like, would, would he become immortal? That would Whoa. be kind of crazy. Would he? Anyway, but yes. I don't know. We don't know. We need to see it because we don't know. So we need to find out. And then what if he and Magneto get into some time travel bullshit and then they merge and then it's Morbnito oh. and, Morb-nito? <laughs> and then he can suck blood and control metal. <laughs> he just like, he just controls people. It's like lifts people up, controls blood. That'd be so crazy. Yes, like exactly. Because he can blood bend. He's just like a blood bender now. I am on blood board this crazy Katara. chain. Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, so Rogus. Rogus, obviously. <laughs> All right. Thank you. One Rogus for Wendy. What about you, Tom? I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to do Rogus too. Double Rogus. Because you know, I know we don't like to talk about rumors and, and conjecture, but this is just too fun of an yes. idea to not get into. Because yes. for all the things that you're saying, I mean, you know, uh, the, cl- the cloud wars, uh, you know, uh, uh the double magnetos, double double venoms would be cool. You know, and that would give that would be a, yes. a cool way to make Topher Grace's venom a little bit more badass. So yeah, it's just too many cool opportunities. Uh, that you're never really going to have a, a story opportunity to tell again outside of Secret Wars, really. Mm. So I think we got to have it. We got to do it. We got to do it. All right. Two Roguses. What, what do you think, Tommy? You know, I was going to rain on this parade a little bit and give you an Ogus because I just have a hard time believing that Marvel, or Disney Marvel, w- would dedicate a giant uh, team up movie to not having any of their IP. I mean, I guess the Fox X-Men are their IP now, but they're not MCU homegrown prospects. They're like, you know, things they acquired, but it's the new year and it's a new me. (laughs) And I like the idea. So I'm going Rogus. I'm going to 24, so. I think there's plenty of room at the table for all of our friends. And for the record, I was assuming they were going to be in the same movie as the MCU, but I just realized, are you saying, MT, that they might have their own separate thing? Yeah, basically. I want it to have nothing to do with the MCU. I want this to be its own thing. I was assuming it would be like like, like the end of Endgame times like 10 Mm. with double clouds and everybody coming together. Mm. But yeah, but with no MCU whatsoever, no, no mention of it. They don't even know what 616 is. (laughs) It's just Magneto and Morbius going head to head. I do agree with Tommy that like, it's very unlikely that the MCU would like not like bring in 616 on this at all. Um, I think that 616 would be involved, but like, I think it'd be really fun still to have the, the Spider-Man face off against the X-Men before, um, having the winner face off against the MCU. That'd be really dope. But up next, Tommy, uh, the wonderful Tomathan, has his own rogue theory about the upcoming Agatha Coven of Chaos show that I cannot wait to listen to. But first, we want to remind you to check out NewRockStarsMerch.com where you can pick yourself up some New Rockstars shirts, hats, hoodies, stickers, pins, and more. Look at Whitney's shirt. Whitney is just looking so good in that new rock star. I'm the most beautiful the creature time. because of this shirt. It really is <laughs> the most beautiful creature on this planet. Before the shirt and after the <laughs> even more so after the shirt. So yes, the best way to find a fellow new rock stars fan in the wild is by spotting this merch in the wild. So let them know your love for new rock stars and support the channel by checking out all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. We also want to thank our amazing friends at NordVPN for sponsoring this video, because here at New Rockstars, we are big fans of NordVPN and all of their incredible features. We spend a lot of time online, and NordVPN offers so many tools that improve your online experience. NordVPN is so easy to use. With one click, just one, NordVPN is up and running. Or you can even enable AutoConnect for zero-click protection to help you browse the internet safely. You don't even have to click once. But it's the future. We don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. With over 5,400 servers in 60 countries, NordVPN gives you access to games and streaming platforms that currently are not available in your region. It's so handy. And the best part is NordVPN will not slow down your online experience at all. They're very, very hip like that. They've done the speed test and NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. Be safe on the internet and we recommend a VPN and NordVPN is the best in the industry. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash rogue theory to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Get that exclusive deal at nordvpn.com slash 
Rogue Theory. We also want to thank Rocket Money for sponsoring this podcast. Do you know how much your subscriptions cost? Because most Americans think that they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, like that streaming service that you bought to watch that one show on, or that free trial that you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so that you can stop paying for the ones that you don't want. Simply find the subscription that you don't want and press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. So many of us at New Rockstars use Rocket Money, and it's helped us cancel those unwanted subscriptions with no hassle. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions today, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash rogue. That is rocketmoney.com slash rogue, rocketmoney.com slash rogue. And we also want to thank Battling Blades. You know what makes Deadpool so great? It's not the jokes or even his cool red uniform. It's his swords, his blades. If you want some blades of your own, check out Battling Blades. Battling Blades designs and sells high quality swords, axes, machetes, and knives, striving to design and create products with the highest quality metals, bone, wood, and leather. And it's more than just the blades. Battling Blades also sells armor, shields, and helmets to really get into character. Looking for something a little bit more personal? Battling Blades will take your custom order to make the blade of your dreams. Seriously, check out their incredible site and see everything that they have to offer. I've got my eyes on a high carbon Damascus steel cutlass sword so I can be the swashbuckler of Boston that I've always dreamed of being. Just go on the streets and fight crime at night with my big ass sword. So for 20% off your Battling Blades order, go to battlingblades.com and enter code ROGUE at checkout. That's a B-A-T-T-L-I-N-G blades.com and enter code ROGUE at checkout to get 20% off your order. And we thank Battling Blades for sponsoring this video podcast. All right, gang, it's time for our second topic. You guys ready? Let's do it. Because my boy Tommy Bechtold is about to blow our minds with this Agatha House of Harkness topic. Take it away, Mr. Tomathan. Folks, I'm going to come at you short and sweet today with this theory because it's so tight and so right. I may not even ask for a vote. <laughs> oh. I will just accept your <laughs> nodding right. approval. We have to vote, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We're all getting hyped up for Agatha House of Harkness, and I am going to tell are. you right now what that show is going to be about. Out, okay, I know that uh, we may not necessarily know, but I have some intuitions. I believe the story of Agatha House of Harkness, season one, hopefully of many, is going to be a story about freeing Wanda from the nightmare world. Now, who is going to free Wanda, our 616 Wanda, from the nightmare world? That's right. She's not dead. She's been trapped by nightmare. He snatched her from Wondercore yeah. Mountain. Now, snatched. who's going to be freeing them? Agatha and Wiccan. Oh, Agatha's a prisoner of her own mind right now, and Wiccan is presumably never really existed and was taken away. It's not that Wiccan, guys. This Wiccan is Billy from Earth 838, the Billy we met as a scared child in Multiverse of Madness. Now, why would Bill Billy care about this Wanda? Well, Billy feels a link to Wanda uh, from his own trauma and feelings of abandonment from being a child of divorce. Wanda so badly wants her kids. The 838 implies that Wanda and Vision have divorced and are not together. Therefore, Billy and Wanda are living with their mother. So I think that that Billy witnessed that and, and was putting it out into the world with his magic that he, he sensed a, a connection to that Wanda. Who senses connections and makes deals and trainings to help people with maybe a little more of a uh, nefarious uh, uh, intentions, Mephisto. Enter Mephisto. He, te he takes 838 Billy under his wing and teaches him how to dreamwalk. So Billy escapes 838 by dreamwalking as whatever the character Joe Locke is going to be playing in the show, the actor Joe Locke, in 616. So that character goes to Agatha, frees her from her mental prison, and then gathers a coven of chaos to go into the nightmare world to battle Nightmare, who is played by Aubrey Plaza. That's right. Nightmare will be played by Aubrey Plaza. Ooh. The coven will be Very battling cool. against Nightmare for Wanda's soul uh, and bringing Wanda back to the 616. 
uh, where she and Joe Locke can be mother and son. Tom DeMaximoff has spoken. There will be no vote. It's all rogus. I'm just kidding. Tom <laughs> you guys can vote. You I guys can vote. <laughs> Tom DeMaximoff. Oh, look. Wait, wait. You're Tom DeMaximoff and I'm Scarlet Witt. That's yeah. so cute. I oh like us. God. I like us being friends, Tommy. This is I great. I'm having a great time. Office. Speaking of no notes, I have no notes on our friendship. No notes except Me for either. More. No notes. No notes on any of our friendships, you guys. I love all of you. Oh, I love this idea of like exploring uh, Billy and his magical abilities and like sort of seeing him get, get tempted by the darker side of magic. Like that is such a good idea. Um, and, and like him having this connection with this other Wanda and like wanting to to save her by working with Ag like it's such a it's such a unique idea that I'm just like, wow, I, I would really love to see this scenario, at least in a what if episode. That'd be really dope. Oh, yeah. What if episode would be would be really cool to see all this because they could do a lot more as far as like, you know, traveling dimensions and powers and stuff that would be hard to get, I think, on Disney Plus. Uh, but I yeah, I, on the web. oops. I see this one off. Sorry. I, mean, I found this on the way. I, she thought I said her name. Let That's Wanda. That She's reaching again. out to us. <laughs> Wanda's reaching out to us <laughs> from beneath the ruins of Wondagore. I scream. I scream. <laughs> <laughs> I scream. When you said the two kids for that, that's the first thing I thought. Yeah. Like all good children do. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of the movie. I love that idea because. Uh, you know, as you were talking, I was also thinking maybe maybe he felt a connection to her because he's from a universe where he lost his mom. Maybe it's not mm. the 838, Tommy. Mm. Maybe it's a 839. And in that mm. one, Wanda died. Mm. And he's and he so he's having a similar arc to Wanda in Doctor mm. Strange, except he's not he doesn't have the dark hold. He's not evil. He's not possessed by that. So he's actually good and he might have a chance to bring her back. And how cool mm. would it be for him to actually succeed in finding, you know, uh, another mom where she couldn't mm. find other kids uh, mm. because he wasn't under the influence of the dark hold. That'd be really cool. I like that a lot. And one other thing I meant, I forgot to mention about this theory. I fleshed it out a little bit on the break room the other day is the 838 has a weird kind of anti-child vibe anyway. If you notice, like when they were traveling around the city of 838, there were no children. It was all adults walking around. And now my theory, practicality wise, was they filmed that during COVID and hiring child extras yeah. might have been an extra layer of difficulty. So they just had all yeah. background actors that were adults. But really, Billy and Tommy are the only children we saw in 838. <laughs> Reed Richards mentions being a father, but he does not. We don't ever see mm -hmm. the kids. There are no other children shown in that. You would think there'd be some other kids eating some uh, you know, pizza balls. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, why the heck yeah. does Pizza Papa exist if there ain't no kids to gobble up those Pizza Papa yeah. balls? He's a papa yeah. to no one. He, he yeah. Just, yeah. The pizza is made out of children. Do you, do you not yeah. get the implication? <laughs> oh my God, there's a global yeah. cabal that eats the adrenochrome pizza. Red, me red means, yeah, red means go and we eat children in the 838. Yeah. This, this is their <laughs> Pizza Gate, Pizza Ball Gate. <laughs> oh pizza Ball God. Gate. Pizza. So Pizza was true, but it's in the 838. Oh, oh my, my God. God. But no, I'm going to give this theory a, a double roguist because it's super rogue. All right. And I really love this idea of Billy um, just really tapping into that that really dark side of magic and um, and dreamwalking like his mom. I think that's really dope. I, I'll give it a double roguist. What do you guys think? I'm going to give it a roguist for two reasons. The first reason being very selfish, which is that I also had a theory that Wanda survived and was in a different dimension that I did a video on like Ooh. a year ago when Multiverse of Madness came out. And if Tommy is right about this, that means I'm right. And then next year hey. when we do the What We Got Wrong videos, this will be my thing I got right. And I'll remember it this time <laughs> and it'll be great. Um, so that's selfishly hey. number one why I want this to be right. <laughs> but number two, I do think that we could see this. It is really realistic because, um, and I'm blanking on the name of the comic book, please don't kill me, internet. It's sitting on my coffee table right now and I'm just blanking, but it's the the one where Wanda does get displaced it was after House of M when she gets displaced to like a different kind of, it's not a different reality, but it's like she gets displaced basically. And she forgets who she is and she like forgets that she's the Scarlet Witch. And I feel like they are going to incorporate elements from that storyline into the MCU mm. and have Wanda mm. have been displaced after her death. And she's not really dead. Maybe she just can't remember exactly who she is 
Or maybe she's trapped, like Tommy's mm. saying. Maybe mm. she has to be broken free from the mm. nightmare zone. I think that that's a Rogus's hell theory, and uh, I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah! Hey, Whitney's invested in this one. She's got stakes in this one. I <laughs> well, um, I, you know, I, I like this theory, and I was going to give it thumbs up. Oh, no. But I'm going to give it two thumbs up because yeah! I was Rogus and I love it hey. and it was great. I, I think you know, the yeah. whole point of you know, Rogue Theory is to get like inspired about and get excited about these movies mm. and about the potential of it. And this is a freaking awesome idea that I hadn't even th- thought about or thought of. Like there's so many shows on the horizon that I- Agatha Coven of Darkness isn't necessarily immediately in front of me. So I hadn't even thought of it. But to incorporate Tommy and to incorporate Nightmare and you even did casting for the cast that's been announced. Like this is a very well thought out, uh, fleshed out idea. Idea, and that deserves two rogue yes. thumbs up. Thank Aubrey you. Plaza, well, 10 I, out of 10. 10 out of 10 casting choice. Mm-hmm. I love that. Dude, that'd be <laughs> sick, especially because did you guys watch her in uh, in Legion? She was so spooky mm. in oh, that, yes. you know? I want to see her get hardcore so like that. I thought you were going to say White Lotus. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Also White Lotus. She was also spooky in that. All right, guys, this brings us to our rogue question. Are you guys ready for this one? Mm. Oh, yeah. Hit me with mm-hmm. it, baby. Mm, because the word around Hollywood is that the search for a new James Bond is really heating up with Aaron Taylor Johnson being presented as a potential frontrunner to take over the iconic role. So I want to hear your guys' Roguest picks for a new James Bond. Go super rogue with this one. I personally would love to see uh, Kermit the Frog as the new James Bond. <laughs> well, obviously. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad you said that because my pick is one of the descendants of the St. Bernard dog Beethoven to play James <laughs> Bone. Uh, <laughs> a, oh, James a, Bond. A, Amazing. I say, why, did it, why has it got to be a human? James Bone. I like my water dish shaken, not stirred. I like my paw to be shook, not yeah. stirred. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it'll be a golden retriever. It'll be a golden retriever and he kills Air people Bond. by no. punching oh, basketballs at their faces <laughs> with his nose. Like, boop, boop, and, uh, ah, and everybody gets murked. Imagine a golden retriever sprinting on top of a train as it's going into a tunnel and you have this drone shot, a wide coming around as this train's like careening and this dog's chasing a guy on a train car. You just sold me, Tommy. This is amazing. Are you expecting <laughs> me to bang? It's Miss, what if it's a little pug and it's Miss uh, Money Puggy? Miss Money Puggy. Oh my, Miss Money, Money Puggy. Puggy. Oh my God. Just like a little one. We have so many like million dollar ideas today. I love yeah, all this. This is the one that Kevin Feige and them need to watch because oh yeah, this is this is where the next the next ten years of movies are being made right here, folks. Barbara Broccoli, if you're watching, it's yeah. all about James Bond. <laughs> Babs Broccoli. I can't believe that's a real person's name. I saw yeah. that and I thought it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I was like Me Barbara too. Broccoli. Every, everybody remembers where they were the first time they found out Barbara Broccoli is a real person. I just heard that <laughs> name right now and I'm like, what? Yeah. Who, that's a real person? Sure yes, is. I found out yeah. on Slack the other day. Mm-hmm. In what context? She does she work at Starbucks? Like what uh, who No, they own the James Bond uh Brand basically. Wait, Barbara Broccoli owns James Bond. That's, That's amazing. Yes, Barbara. It is freaking true. Is this broccoli. part of like the Veggie Tales universe? That's yes. Crazy. yes. This just opened up a whole was... new thing. <laughs> James what? Bond is a Christian what? vegetable now, and you guys are all gonna like it. <laughs> Careful, Tom. <laughs> he doesn't get laid anymore. He saves it for marriage as God intended. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly. the new James Bond. And Tom, be careful. If you investigate this too much, you could be known as a stalker. Stalk. Uh, celery. A- celery. Broccoli stalk. Uh, you don't want to get too I, steamed. I, I, you don't want to get too steamed over this. Uh, don't get I, can too steamed. Him, uh, I can imagine him in this infamous uh, Bond hooking up uh, scene and being like, ever eat your vegetables today? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I got a big old eggplant for you, exactly. baby. Oh, my yeah, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He would say that. He would say that. He's too suave. These are full of antioxidants. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. No All right. Notes. Let's end the show. Let's end the show. <laughs> Wait, what do you have, Tom? Did you? Did you oh you man, say? I forgot. I thought the I forgot that that Airbud was such a good idea. I was like, that's a great idea. Then I was like, that's my idea. You I forgot that I didn't even come up with one. Um, okay, I was like the boofing <laughs> ball. Uh, he helped me flesh out this whole world. We did it together. We did it. This will be a group <laughs> effort. We'll, we'll, 
Let's be a, a air air bond. Um, air bond will be our yeah. rogue <laughs> answer for today. Uh-huh. I love that so much, Whitney. Okay, my answer is obviously Pete Davidson. Yes. Because he keeps <laughs> pulling bitches. And it's like, what? Wow. How? Why? At least if he was James Bond, it would make sense. And these bitches will be dogs because it's still part of the Air Bond universe. <laughs> part of the Air Bond. Spoiler, Air Bond. It's so all awesome. connected. <laughs> Air Bond, Bond, Tobin, and... <laughs> James Bone. I'll, I'll tie mine back to that where, okay, I'll, uh, I don't think anyone uh, got this because I was one who mentioned VeggieTales. So I'll say uh, the cucumber from VeggieTales can be the... Yes. The, it can be okay. too. That way you can, you can have your vegetables and eat it too. There you go. Vegetable James <laughs> Bond is a really good call, I think. Virginal vegetable James Bond. And it could be, yeah, it could be Pete Davidson, a vegetable, <laughs> and, and a dog. I would And a dog. Those are their, they're all three oh in the casting <laughs> office and they're just like, so you up for the you up for Bond? Yeah, me too. My agent got me this. It's pretty good. We're gonna cast you all. Pete Davidson starts sweating. He's like, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna I don't get know this. if I can measure up to a cucumber and a dog. <laughs> but no, I, I would love to see Pete Davidson. He's basically the American Bond at this point. He's betted all of our starlets. Everybody. He has. He's betted all, <laughs> all of, them. of them. At this point, we're all Eskimo brothers with Pete Davidson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's either Pete Davidson or Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. He'll pop oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, Nick Cannon is possibly the only person who gets laid more than Pete Davidson. Yeah, if there's an apocalypse, we need to make sure he and his family survives because he can repopulate the world. Mm-hmm. Great. Oh, he can repopulate exactly. the entire... He's like the Genghis Khan of the 20th century. <laughs> 21st Seriously, century. 21st like century. Father I'm Abraham done. over here. I am gonna, I'm going to give the rogue question, uh, the rogue point, of course, to the, the air buddy. Um, universe that I, I like yeah. a good dog, a good perfect. bond. So Tommy mm-hmm. wins the question trophy, the rogue trophy for today because we all love the roguest of us all, Tommy Beck told. And all of you, I love each and every one of you because I love, love just doing with, with you guys every week, <laughs> just being silly. And, and rogue and nerdy. But that is it for this episode of Rogue Theory. Thanks to our amazing guests, Wendy Van Lenningham, Tom Michelson, and Tommy Bechtold. Go follow them all on their Twitters. They're all amazing people. And you can support our channel by checking out all of our awesome merch over at newrockstarsmerch.com. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter. If you want to see me tweet some weird shit, you can follow New Rockstars on all social platforms. And be sure to subscribe to our channel here on the YouTube.com. We love you guys so much. Thank you guys for spending time with us. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.